Okay, so doing this video and knowing that the answers or the questions that I, were, I was asked, um, I'd never seen before. Came straight from the dome. I, I created my responses with honesty. However, the responses to the video were all kind of all over the place, but mostly they were good engaging responses that is what we want on this platform. We want people to dialogue and we want healthy dialogue and we do want the good and the bad. So we'll be able to um, decipher where the mindset is of black people. So we are going to go through the comments of the black feminism video. And I'm going to kind of give my reaction on the comments as it pertains to the video and kind of maybe um, re-explain where it is that I was coming from. Because when you say things off the dome sometimes, it might go left a little bit and you're like, okay, where did I just go with this? So to be able to um, explain kind of where I was coming from in the truth of what I felt, because these questions were very, they were good questions and they were important questions when having the conversation between black men and black women. So we're gonna go through the comments really quickly and kind of pick out ones that I feel are um, important. It's a lot of comments. <laughs> Some good, some bad. It's a humbling experience for sure to see some of these comments. Um, but let's kind of go through it. There's one that I noticed when I was kind of going through the comments that I thought was important. When I was talking about Lil' Kim and I was talking about how she looked up to Biggie or she looked up to Tupac and and kind of trying to emulate them and how it was okay for them to talk about those things, but it wasn't okay for her to talk about those things. Here's the comment here. Let's all pretend as if men weren't buying into all the bull-ish. That was the comment. And I think that was a very interesting comment because mm, although Lil' Kim was... talking about what she was talking about. I wasn't so much saying that what Biggie was talking about wasn't just as destructive to the black community, because it, it is. And I think that is something that we really do need to talk about when we talk about the conversation between feminism or we talk about the conversation with black women. It isn't one-sided. I think that coming from a woman's perspective, I um, am harder on women because I feel as though I have to be. And I feel as though I would want someone to keep me accountable. Um, but that's kind of the perspective that I was coming from. Lil' Kim is a woman. Let me keep Lil' Kim accountable for her actions because her actions in the past, I've never met her, but I know that her presentation to the world was not a great representation of black women. Now, um, black men do have a lot of responsibility. Some black men, let me not say all black men, but some black men do have a lot of responsibility in perpetuating the behavior, certain behaviors of black women. I think that Tupac, Biggie, I'm young, so I don't really 100% have a grasp on that era. Um, but I can tie it into a lot of the men in our generation, futures and the money bag yo's of our generation that do have a lot of responsibility in perpetuating the stripper culture. They perpetuate the, um, you know, girls getting naked on Instagram, big booty bees or whatever, shaking, shaking ass in front of the camera, this and that. They perpetuate it. 
So I don't want this to come from a place of I'm only bashing black women because men do have and they are buying into the culture. And I think that when we talk about that space, because that culture of, um, you know, getting in front of a camera and and having your ass out and stripper culture and rapper culture, that culture is very minute and very um, particular. I think it's blown up because of social media, but I do not think that most people are, are living that life. However, because it does have such a huge impact on us, and it has such a, a huge impact on our children, I think that it is definitely worth the conversation. Um, it's time for black people to start to um, audit the actions of the people that we look up to. And when I say black people, I don't mean it in general. Cause like for me, I don't look up to a Lil' Kim, I don't look up to a Cardi B or a Nicki Minaj, but I know that a lot of my peers do. And I am only as good, morally right to society as my peers are. So um, it's time for us to audit and, and to keep those people who play in those spaces very frivolously accountable because it's not serving us to emulate a future or a Cardi B or a Nicki Minaj. It's fun. I can understand it's fun. It's fun to, to dance to their music. It's fun to post them on Instagram and, and, and more so for women to say, you know, get your bag, sis, and this, and it's fun to do that, but is it productive? That's my thing. And I know I've gone off on a little bit of a tangent, but when we talk about that culture, I just want to make it very clear that although in the video I was harping on city girls and I was harping on Cardi B and Nicki Minaj, I do see that black men, Tupac's and the biggies should be held, held just as, just as accountable, 100%. And I think that black people sometimes, especially with maybe like a Tupac, because he was a conscious individual. He was very conscious and he was very much aware of his blackness. He was very much aware of politics. Still, the stuff that he talked about, calling women bitches and, and hoes and this and that, I think that Biggie might have been a little bit more into that space. Um, that still, they still need to be held accountable as well. So where do we draw the line? because we have to stay consistent. We have to stay consistent. We can't say because I like this artist, they get a pass, but the, that artist might say one or two things that are like woke or whatever, but the premise of their brand is still a degradation to the black community. So that's kind of what I uh, wanted to say about that comment. I think it was important. Um, I'm a woman and I will always keep women accountable. Call me, pick me if you want. I don't, I don't really mind that word. <laughs> I have a lot of respect for black men and whatever I have to do to keep black women accountable and aware. I think accountable, it's time for us to maybe retire that word because it's become such a cliche. I wanna keep black women aware of their actions and, as it pertains to how they communicate with black men because it's important. And black women want to be in relationship with black men. I don't care what anybody says, we do. We do. We can talk about how, it, you know, niggas ain't shit and, and fuck that nigga or whatever. We love black men. To the core, we do. There's a lot of hurt and there's a lot of healing that needs to go behind um, mending the relationship. But I will, always hold, I will always hold black women to an awareness of their actions because it's going to affect the way that we communicate and treat our black men. Inevitably, it'll be it'll be an awareness of how we treat ourselves because a black man 
is a reflection of us. When we look at a black man, we're looking in the mirror, whether we want to admit it or not. And it also is a reflection of um, how we're going to treat our children. And that's the most important thing is how we're going to treat our children. Because when a, as much as a black woman might say in words aren't shit or whatever, whatever, if you have a son, then what? Does your, does your narrative change then? How does it change? If your narrative doesn't change, what exactly does that look like? So those are just kind of some things that, um, that, that we need to talk about and that I'm willing to talk about and I will play the martyr for. And I have high hopes that um, it'll pay off in the future. So, okay. Let's find another comment that I kind of liked. These comments are awesome. A lot of them were kind of crazy, but most of them were really, really good. There's, here's another one that said, even men shouldn't have been talking about the shit that they were talking about. It's all very toxic. That's so true. That's so true. Okay, here's a good one talking about feminism. Modern feminism is very different than the first couple of ways. It's two separate entities within our community. So um, I don't think, I think that we can, we can take what our grandparents might have told us about feminism and we can read and we can research what it was, but none of us were there my age, people my age were there to see the advent of feminism and how it um, evolved. Only thing we see now is modern day feminism. Um, and I think it's called modern day feminism because the crux of what feminism is to me, not to everyone, but to me, is um, the empowerment of women, which sounds really wonderful. And it is wonderful. I think that women should be empowered because I think that women are very powerful and they should know, they should be aware of that power and they should know when to use it. I think that, um, <clears throat> I think that what we see in modern day feminism has turned into, and this is not an uncommon theme, we're all talking about it, has turned into the, the bashing of black men. And I'm not gonna talk about any other race, but black men. Feminism is pretty consistent as far as the bashing of men, but we'll talk about specifically the bashing of black men. The first couple of ways of feminism might've looked like in speculation. I've been in the house for so long, I have other other skill sets that I think that could be productive to society. Previously, I was not allowed the opportunity to flex those skill sets. Let me get out here and have the power to have a voice. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I really don't. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Black men and their families and their communities were very different than white men in their families, in their communities. Now, where do we go missing when we started to equate our relationship with our man? And Sister Shahrazad Ali talks about this all the time. Where, 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 do we, where do we start to equate the relationship between our men and the relationship that white women might have had with white men? And I'm not going to really talk much about white women, but um, when did it become a burden to be under the leadership of a man? Were our men um, what's the word? Were our men unsupportive of us having a voice? This is what we do. This is when we need to talk to our elders and, and, and really have this discussion with them. Were they unsupportive of, of us of, of having a voice? Were we even gung-ho and excited to get out in the workforce? 
Is that something that was a thing? And if we were, I'm not going to say why, because I can understand why. But where did we come up with the idea that our excitement to get to the workforce was more important than us being loyal to our husbands and us being submissive to our husbands? Because there's a hierarchy there in a family unit. I don't, I, I will ride with this to the day I die. There is a hierarchy when it comes to the family unit. A woman is under the protection of a man. Biologically, it makes sense. It does. I know it's a, a very hard concept for us to wrap our minds around, but it makes sense biologically why we would be under the protection of a man if we were threatened, why a man would be the ones to protect us. The guidance and the leadership, because we can be very emotional, very chaotic in our nature. We have to start asking ourselves, so why would a man that's logical, reasonable, decisive, disagreeable in making certain decisions? Disagreeable is not a bad word. We need to get out of the fact that disagree. It's not a bad word. It can be in a bad context, but it's not a bad word. Why will we think that? At what point do we, we take our desire to be working and in the workforce We took that as truth and as something that's more favorable over the submission to our men and inevitably having that submission to our men trickle down into the ease of raising our children. That's my thing when it comes to feminism. And where we are now is that we've, we've, we have these women who are very educated, which I think is amazing. I'll be the first to talk about, yes, sis, you go. That's amazing. I love that. I love seeing educated women. I'm an educated woman. Is my education more important than my community and my loyalty to my family and the duty that I have as a woman? No, it's not. It's not. It's not more important. So there are differences between the first wave of feminism and modern feminism. And we do need to do more research because at this point, there's no really comparing the two. But we are in the modern day and we have to, thinking about the past has to be a point of education because we're not living in the past anymore. We are living in the present. So how do we decipher and how do we maneuver with where feminism is going in the present? So... That's, that's kind of my rant on that question. Um, yeah, let's see. I see a lot of comments about my honesty. And I think it's important to be honest. Um, such honest answers. I think it's important to be honest. And um, when, when discussing these topics, I don't... I don't tiptoe around the topic whatsoever. And that gets me into a lot of heat with a lot of people in my life. Um, because I don't attract, I don't attract at all the type of women or the type of men that I talk about when it comes to my friends. So my friends are like, you know, why are you talking about this, Sid? Like, what does this have to do with you? Can we talk about something else? This is getting very frustrating for you to be talking about this all the time. But like I said at the beginning, I'm only as good as the sister that really needs help and really needs to be pulled up. And black people have this individualistic view of things. And I'm, I am a hundred percent guilty of thinking about myself <clears throat> Before I think about my community, I think that that's a human thing, but it's time for us to re-engineer our perspective of the collective. And if we're really, if we're going to be willing to have this conversation, we have to be willing to um, 
speak on the collective because if we're just going to speak on an individual base, it's a waste of time to me. So honesty is the only way that's going to get me there. And if it ruffles some feathers, that's a risk I'm willing to take. And I'm always down to sit down and have a conversation with anyone because I am speaking my truth. And when there comes truth with good plus good communication, you can get you can get through to to a lot of people. And it's time for my black women to have the conversation. Let's just say that. Um, okay. Kind of going through these comments. There is a lot of comments that were like this one. I just don't have time to convince or negotiate with black women anymore. I've discovered foreign black women and it's just as good, if not better. I didn't settle for an American black woman. And to a lot of women that would be um, triggering. But to me, it's just sad. <laughs> it's heartbreaking to see that. It's very heartbreaking to see that. Um, because I love, not only because I love black men, but because I think that, um, I think that the black community is in a crisis. I think we're, not only are we under attack from external forces, we also are under attack from, by, from ourselves. And if we don't get it together in 10 years, in a general, let me not say 10 years, in a generation's time, the black family will be no more. And I hope that people can wrap their minds around that. That in a generation's time, if we don't get a grasp on the relationship between black men and black women, black fathers and black mothers, that the black family, as we know it, is done. And, you know, all the music that we loved, all the old school music that we loved to dance to that talked about family and community and unity will be very triggering to us because it'll be a thing of the past for real. Not in the, the context of that it was made in the past, in the context that we have no way to get back to that. And if black people are willing to take that risk, all right, cool. I don't think black people are willing to take that risk. So black men saying that they're done with black women and American black women, so let's break it down. That's what they're talking about. Black American women. And um, they're happy that they discovered foreign black women. It's interesting because they're still black women at the end of the day. They're just not in the confines of the West. Um, that's heartbreaking. That's very heartbreaking. And I, it's not it's not something where I'm like, well, what do foreign black women have on American black women? Because I get it. I get it. Now, if you go to, there's a lot of foreign black women that are very Americanized and they still live in their countries. You go to some West African countries, Caribbean countries, I'm not going to name them, but they are on the same tip as us because as you know, European culture is, has infiltrated a lot of different places. But um, the point is, what do black women need to do to cater more to our black men? That's the biggest thing. If you don't care, you don't care. If you want to go date a white man and divest and do it all, you know, all that, I guess go ahead and do it. There's really no talking. And I was talking to a friend yesterday and um, I think that when black women as a collective because black women are impressionable on one another very, very much more than black men are. Black women will catch a fad and they will, everyone will be on that. We see that with the, the Megan Thee Stallion culture. It's like these black women are catching on to something and everyone's emulating the same thing like they're sheep. But if this divest culture and this pink pill, if it becomes a mainstream thing within the black female American community, it's over with. If we, if they, if they say that they're going to go out and date white men and it works and it sticks because 
There's this narrative that just because you go out and date white men that they want to date you. No, you might just be still another black person to them, but whatever, it's a whole different conversation. But if black women, um, they go out and they, they have a collective view that we're going to go date black white men, that can be, that can be very damaging. All right, let's go to another video. <clears throat> that was a great video. Um, let's go to another video though. Let's see. Sheesh. All righty. All right, let's do the submission video. This was a great video too. We got a really a lot of good, good comments on this one that I'm excited to see. I've kind of gone through the comments and I kind of have not, because they can be kind of mean. Y'all are some savages out there. It's, it's putting that out there. Y'all are some, y'all are some straight up savages in these comments. You have to be humble out here. All right, let's see. This is a good one. The deeper question, oh my gosh, she's fat. Okay, so this is a good one. The deeper question still comes, why is it that women feel the need to defend their independence to their man, yet not to anyone else? Um, why does your boyfriend need to, or husband need to deserve your humility and cooperation? So the women that really are like against submission are very disagreeable. I don't, I think they're disagreeable with everyone. I don't think they're disagreeable in the core. I don't think they're disagreeable just to their husbands. I think that because their husbands and their boyfriends are the closest to them in proximity, that's where their disagreeableness comes out the most. But if you're a disagreeable person, you're a disagreeable person. Now, there are those women that go out of their way to be disagreeable towards men because they feel like they have something to prove or they feel as though that man is not deserving or they're being mean or they're being degrading because there are a lot of women out here. And um, I'm not speaking for all women, but just from the, the premise of... Um, the conversations that I've had or that I've seen, a lot of women, I, I, I think wholeheartedly think that black men are subhuman, similar to how white men think that black women, black men are subhuman. You see how that works. Um, yeah, I think that they, they think that they're genuinely beneath them. That's, I think that those women are far, very minimal and people might disagree with me. Um, but for you to treat someone as subhuman or that that they're not in equality to you, that's very telling. Do you think that your coworker is subhuman or or not equal of or at least um, worthy of a conversation or of respect? Think your boss is not worthy of respect? You think your son's football coach or, or the, I don't know, the soccer mom who's the, you know, brings the snacks or whatever, you think that they're not worthy of respect? Of course you do. You're not going to talk to them crazy. You're not going to be um, combative for no reason. But for some reason, women are just so combative when it comes to the, the, the masculinity that black men have. And there's nothing wrong with masculinity. Ladies that are watching to the 12 people, the 12 women that watch this channel, there's nothing wrong with that. And I, I really, really need, and I know I'm young and I don't know everything. And I don't want to come off like I know everything, but I know what I've experienced. And I know that in the, the presence of 
of honest and genuine masculinity. I'm not even going to use good or bad. I'm not going to use toxic or mm, I'm talking about genuine masculinity where that man knows where he stands as a man, baby, that comes, that brings ease. <laughs> that brings comfort. That's not having to worry about anything. And a lot of us have been raised by single mothers and we've seen that struggle. And we should learn from that and be like, I don't want to have to do everything. We've seen, we've seen our parent, or at least I was raised by a single mom. I saw my mom do everything. And to this day, she's like, I wish I had help. I just need some help. There's nothing wrong with needing help. Masculine men are useful. I'm not saying use them. It's very different. But man, men are useful. They want to be useful. They use their hands. That's why men are good at using their hands. They like to build stuff. They like to fix things. They like to solve problems. Who the hell likes to solve their own problems? We all took math. We didn't like doing that shit. Excuse my language. We didn't like solving the math problem. We want someone that in the comfort of their presence, we feel like, yeah, solve this problem for me, baby. And it doesn't always come in the form of finances or um, I need my nails done. So send me some money for my nails or send me money for that. It doesn't always come like that. Sometimes it's like when my car, you know, my tires busted, you know, if you're a little younger, maybe your father will step in, you know, if you, if God bless you with that. But you know, when you're older, if my tires busted or my windows busted, or I need something fixed at the crib or this and that that's calling on a man that can be platonic man. That can be a man you're in a relationship with, but you know, use. Let me call, hit him up. You know, he'll be there. That is ease. I don't want to fix my own plumbing situation. I don't even want to pay nobody to do that. I don't even want to get on Yelp and look up a plumber. I don't want to do none of that. I want my man to do it. Like, you no, know, that's when we talk about independence. Why are we so gung ho about being completely independent? I don't think there's anything wrong with being independent, honestly. I don't, mm, let me take that back. I don't think there's, there's anything wrong with having independent characteristics within you. I don't think there's anything wrong because when we talk about survival, if something were to happen, a woman can be under the protection of a man and that man might pass away. And what are we going to do with me and these kids? we got to figure out what's going on. That is survival. We're talking about the overwhelming characteristic of myself as a black woman. It's just, I'm independent and this and that, like, you see how everyone always does the, the snap and the neck roll because it's not cute because it's humorous. It's not cute to be independent and not want a man around. I don't want men around. I like men. They'd be fine too. So nice to look at. Just saying. So yes. So that's my response to that question as far as why do they feel like they need to defend their man to anyone else? I don't think that's a just a defending their their independence of their man thing. I think that's, you're just inherently disagreeable and you need to go to counseling. You need to get some healing going, meditate and figure out what's going on with that within yourself as to why you are so negative. So that's just, that's just my point. All right, let's see. All right, this is a good one. When I was talking about how the heartbreak is perpetual. And I guess this kind of ties into a little bit of what I was just talking about as far as single mothers being the ones that have to run the households. And it's, it's honestly very um, not admirable, respectable for a lot of single moms out here that um, we're talking about single moms that are single because I think that we, <laughs> we've gotten into this space where it's like, are you a single mom by choice? <laughs> or are you a single mom because you don't know how to act? That might, that might make some people mad. Well, we got to define what single motherhood is. I'm talking about single moms um, that... Um, Somebody might have walked out on them. You know, they tried their best and the man's just not there. 
I think the single motherhood looked differently maybe in the 80s and the 90s than it does in the 2000s. Um, But yeah, they they taught their children because mental health and and healing, it's kind of like a new thing with our generation, but it wasn't a thing really, especially not with my parents. So a lot of the things that my mom learned from her mother has been passed down. And, you know, it's like now it's like me having the light bulb go off. But the heartbreak, when I say the heartbreak is perpetual, is it's a cycle that has continued and somebody has to take accountability for it at some point. And I think that our generation finally is taking having to be the ones to take that accountability if we're willing. Um, It's deep. It really is really, really deep. And when the manosphere talks about, well, single mothers are the ones raising these boys, that's not cute. And that's not anything to joke and play with and to throw around as a means to hurt a woman. That's deep rooted black people shit right there. Like that's something that we have got to get a hold of. Um, we are, mothers are, are very important. We need to protect motherhood because we're the ones that raise these kids in the context of the single mothers that they're the only ones raising them. And also in the context of even if it's a two parent household, the woman is the one that has their hands on these kids when it comes to education, when it comes to hygiene, when it comes to spirituality, when it comes to so many things. Um, the mama's boy mantra isn't, you know, just because he's, you know, simping for his mom, I guess. It's just because it's your mother. You came out, you, she developed you in her womb and she birthed you. And, um, it's very important that we get a grasp on the way that we heal ourselves because it does have a deep rooted effect on, um, it has a deep rooted effect on the outcome of our children. Not saying that the fathers are not important because they are. They're very important. Mothers just play a different role than fathers do. So, yeah. Okay, I'm just going through these questions. Mm. Let's see. She, says she keeps saying loyalty while describing responsibility. Ooh, that's actually really good. I would say that they were one and the same because if you have a loyalty to com- your community, you also have a sense of responsibility to your community. But I do see why he would. Um, I do see why he would compare the two. Loyalty versus responsibility. You could have a loyalty to your football team, but you don't have a responsibility to make sure you go to practice and have a hand in them winning a game. I'm a metaphor girl. I don't know if that made much sense. But um, I think you have both. And I think that a lot of us don't have a loyalty to our community. That's why we are willing to, <clears throat> to date outside of our race because the other, because my black counterpart made me angry or we're willing to not have the conversation of the plights of black people or we're willing to not talk about where we came from in our ancestry because we don't have a loyalty and we don't care. A lot of us are very highly educated. We have some money in our pockets. Um, We're a part of the bourgeois and, you know, living that cushy middle-class lifestyle. So we don't have a loyalty. Um, And that's dangerous. That's dangerous, right? And that's dangerous because it makes us think that we're just, we'll talk about the context of America. It makes us think that we're just American. 
and we should be loyal to, to him. We're American first or I'm a woman first. No, you're black first. You can't change that skin color, baby. The society might allow you to change that gender, honey, but you ain't changing that skin tone, okay? So yeah, the loyalty to your community um, is, it's, it, it's extremely important. The responsibility, I think, is something that we might have issues with um, because where there's responsibility, there's action going out and actually going into your community and doing things. I have an issue with this. I know a lot of us have an issue with this. We do need to start volunteering a lot more in our communities for real. Um, and I know we, you know, we work nine to fives. A lot of us were entrepreneurs. You were, we're tired. We got kids. Like, it's like, it's hard to think about other people within our community, but you know, we really do need to get on that. So, okay. I'm rambling, but yes, loyalty responsibility. I take that as going hand in hand personally. All right, let's see here. Ooh, okay, this is a good one because I talked about in this video, the chunk of the video about how women will, they'll do everything to make their space cozy for their friends and they'll cater to their friends and they'll take them out to dinners and, and you know, do all those things. But when it comes to their man, I think that maybe it depends on the friend group, but I have seen in the past where some people might be kind of nervous to talk about catering to their man. And that usually is because their friends don't have men. So it's like, I don't want to brag or whatever. But um, he said, honestly, or she said, honestly, for a woman to keep her friends closer to her than her man is crazy. That is crazy, especially when you talk about commitment. When you're a little younger and you're playing around, which I don't advise, but whatever, you know, you're not as mature. Um, that man just might be another tick, you know, it's like, whatever, these are my girls. But as you get older, it's time for women to take into consideration the loyalty they need to have towards their man as the head of the relationship. Your friends ain't got nothing to do with it. Doesn't mean you don't have a friendship with them, of course, but it's time to put your friends in a certain place and it's time to put your man at a certain place. Um, he said, this is why a lot of black women aren't married. I don't know. I think there's a lot of different reasons why black women aren't married, but it sounds like he might be speaking from experience. Now, this is interesting. He said, black men, we don't put our friends over our women, especially our wife. In the context of boyfriend, and girlfriend, I don't know about that. I know a lot of men out here that love hanging out with their homeboys. But I think that maybe just might just come with maturity. He did say his wife. So um, I do know some husbands who would never put their friends over their wife. So it just depends. I don't know if that's a comparison thing because I know a lot of women that will never put their friends over their husbands. So I don't know if that's a comparison thing, but I do think that when you are younger, and I think that young people are having children earlier, so it's important to focus on younger people. Um, a lot of women might be a little scared to talk about submitting to their man and be like, oh no, like I'm not doing that. But behind closed doors, girl, you submit to him. So, yeah. Let's see. Okay, this is a good one. It's one thing I did not talk about in the video. And I got a lot of flack from this from people in my, in my life. And they were like, you talk so much about submission, but you forgot to mention that the black man's not worth submitting to, then why does it even matter? This person said, the truth is black women are very much in support of submission as long as the black men, as long as it's the right black men as long as it's the black men submitting to them. Okay, maybe I misread this comment. The truth is black women are very much in support of submission as long as it's the black. Oh, okay. Okay, I read this wrong. Okay, I read this wrong. So there, so this person is saying that um, if you, I'll submit to you if you submit to me. That don't even make no sense. 
two CEOs in the room together, they're just going to murder each other. That doesn't, that don't make no sense, ladies, if that's the way you think, which I don't think a lot of black women think like that. But um, we'll go to my first point <clears throat> about black men, a lot of black men not being worthy of submitting to. And I think that this is um, two things. I think first, submission can't be conditional. Whether you get your heart broken tomorrow and then the next day you can't, you can't, or unless you, you get your heart broken yesterday and today you are saying, I'm not going to submit. What I'm saying is it has to be a consistent thing. You have to be, I think that submission for me, and I know a lot of people don't think like this, but for me, I think that women, a black woman should submit to a black man. That's just my viewpoint. So if we're, we're going with that, that has to be something that's instilled and ingrained in you. And it can't be conditional, whether you get your heart broken or whether you have a bad conversation with, with the black man on the street or whatever, it can't be conditional. And, um, I think a lot of that comes from the home when it comes from respect. When I think about submission, I think about respect. You know, there's no woman on this earth and this, I mean, that's biology. I, I have a certain level of respect. Mm, I might get some flack for this. I have a certain level of respect and a little bit of fear, a little bit, a little bit of fear. I'm going to go with this. Okay. I have a certain, a little bit of fear for a, a, a black man that's bigger than me, because I know that if anything were to go awry, not saying it will because of his personality or not the conditions of the situation, but I know biologically, if things were to go awry, he can punch me in the face and I'd be out of here. I'd be out of here. So it's a, it's a natural respect that you have for just the physical biological makeup of men. Um, um, women don't have that anymore. They don't care. Women have access to guns. Like they don't care anymore about, uh, they think they can take on in their mind men. They do, which is, which is wild. And I think those, those two things do coincide because if I don't respect the biology of a man in practicality, I'm not going to respect him either. And submission and respect, like I said, go hand in hand to me. If you don't want to submit to your man, see how it works out. That's all I have to say. If you don't submit to your man and he's the type of man that allows that, I also will say, see how that works out because you might be the type of woman that like passive men and they don't mind submitting to their woman, you know, and if that works for you, that's fine. I just don't think that that's a natural inclination for women to be, um, for women to be, to gravitate towards men that they can't submit to. And it's so interesting because the men, the men that they can submit to are usually, or the men that they will submit to are usually not the men that they should submit to because we have this warped view of masculinity that if he's not a hood nigga or a rough and abrasive that he's not worthy of submission. That's not true. I don't think that, I think that a man that is quiet and shy should be just as worthy of submission as a man that's domineering. That's just me. So yeah. All right.
All right, I think I'm done with this one. Let's do one more. I want, to, I want to talk about the LGBTQ community. There's one I did on LGBTQ. That one was kind of iffy. It wasn't my best work. <laughs> and I'll tell you why. That's a touchy subject for me and a lot of people, and I won't get into it today, but I will kind of explain the question that was asked. And I think the point that I'm just going to try to make, because a lot of these comments were, well, she didn't really answer the question. And there was one person that um, answered it. He was a gay male and he answered it. And he said that pretty much a premise was that a lot of black women don't, you know, don't really rock with him either. And the question was, why do black women go so hard for um, gay black men? And I think that a better question is, well, first off, I will say, I don't think that, a, I don't think a large majority of women, we're not talking about women in New York or leftist women or women in Cali or Atlanta or whatever, just general, general women over the scope of the country, black women. I don't think that they ride as hard for gay and trans as people think they do. But the point that I want to make, he said, you skated around this combo. <laughs> I did. I did skate around. I deflected. I'm not going to lie to y'all. I think the question, if we're going to talk about, um, we need to talk and the relationship between black men and black women are, is why are black women so quick to call a man gay that doesn't fit their narrative or their, their stereotype of what a masculine black man is. And I think that's where defining masculinity becomes very important and femininity as well. Those are very hard things to define. I don't know if you have a conversation with someone about what it is, you'll get a gazillion different definitions of it. Um, but I think that black women do find it easy. To, oh, this nigga gay because he didn't do something that catered to your, what you wanted. You didn't get the outcome that you might've wanted from him or because he didn't, he did something that you might've found infeminate. And I think that this is something that we need to start to unlearn because people are multifaceted. And there's a, there's a black man out there that likes to draw and paint and there's a black man out there that likes to play football and basketball and all the sports, you know? So there's, there's a range of black men. And in those ranges of black men, there's good ones that could be just as good of a husband. They just have different, um, they just have different, um, hobbies or they have different personality types. But for you to just say, oh, you gay, first of all, that's a kind of an insult to gay men, honestly, because, you know, as much as we might talk about the LGBTQ community and maybe like the, the detriment that I might have, there's people that have that narrative, black gay, gay men are still gay men. And there's gay men that are out there that are in their truth gay. So for you to, and they're men and they're black, <laughs> they're black men. So it's like for you to use that in it as an insult, I think is very lowly. And it's easy to use that. It's like, get out of that because that's not cute. Use, use your brain and come up with a better insult. But, um, but yeah, that's kind of the, that's kind of what I was kind of hoping I was going towards. I think that I was just focusing on not hurting people's feelings in the video that I didn't go into that, but, um, it's the truth. So, um, this person said LGBT is African Americans, women favorite alliance. I don't know if I agree with that either. Hi, I'm done. I'm almost done at least. You got some heat, baby. So you done?